In this video, I'm going to talk about how to deal with elastic collisions um, and velocity of approach. So you can imagine a situation where you have two objects uh, that are uh, coming towards each other. Uh, so um, this object over here has some initial velocity. Um, we'll call this M1. Uh, it has some initial velocity v1 initial and then this guy over here is coming towards it it has a mass of m2 and some uh, initial velocity of v2 initial these two objects collide elastically so they bounce and then they'll uh, head back to where they came from so uh, in the end uh, mass one will have some velocity one final and mass two will have some velocity two final okay and so the question is like what will be those final energies uh the final velocities i mean so um we know because of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum that we can solve this problem because um we're going to get two equations with two unknowns if we're given everything in the initial situation. So our initial momentum will equal our final momentum. So we can write this equation m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m1 or sorry m2 v2 final. Uh, then this would be our first equation. We can then um, create a second equation where the kinetic energies, excuse me, the kinetic energy initial is equal to the kinetic energy final. If this is a completely elastic collision, then kinetic energy will be conserved. Uh, remember, in elastic collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved. So we can write our conservation of kinetic energy equation now. This equation says that the initial kinetic energy of M1 plus M2 will equal the final kinetic energy of M1 plus M2. This is our second equation. Um, so at this point is where uh, the algebra starts to get a little hairy. Um, we can cancel all of the one halves. You see we have a half in every term that we can cancel out. And then what I'm gonna do is um, get all of the M1s on one side and all of the M2s on the other side. So uh, that's the equation that you'll see right now. Now I'm just gonna factor out a mass, um, M1 from the M1 side and M2 from the M2 side. Okay, so um, we have this now. Um, things are starting to get really algebra heavy. Um, You'll never have to do this, but I think it's important to see where this comes from. So here we have this term and this term. If you remember back to factoring, we can express these two terms as a product of two things or as a product of two um, uh, quantities. And so this squared can be expressed as um, velocity initial minus velocity one initial minus velocity one final times velocity one initial plus velocity one final. If you foil this first inside outside last, you'll end up with the thing that's above uh, right here. So we can do that to the other side as well. Okay, so at this point, we're going back to equation one. This was the momentum equation, the momentum um, uh, right up here, the conservation of momentum right here. So we're going to rearrange this equation so that we have all of the M1s on one side and all the M2s on the other side. Okay. Um, I'm going to just factor this equation uh, in the same line so that I'm saving space. So uh, I'm going to factor out an M1 from each term on the left side and an M2 from each term on the right side. Okay, you might not love this, but because equation three you have um, uh, 
something is equal to something and equation four, you have something is equal to something. We can divide these equations. You can divide an equation by anything or multiply an equation by anything. And so for this, we're actually just gonna take all equation three and divide it by all of equation four. Um, and so when I look at that, I'm just gonna do this. Whoop, whoop. And then I'm just gonna take my eraser and put a big equal sign in the middle. Um, if you don't understand this, uh, holler at me. I can um, help you figure that out. But from here is like the the piece the 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 piece that's so interesting or kind of cool um, that all of this complicated math and algebra has uh, popped out um, something that's fabulous, uh, and we can cancel things. So this term has an m1. V1 initial minus V1 final as it's also divided by that. So those two will cancel. And so this term, the M2 V2 final minus V2 initial will cancel with what you've divided it by. Okay, so this leaves us an equation that says this. The velocity of one initially plus the velocity of one final equals the velocity of two final plus the velocity of two initial. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Well, um, let's rearrange this one more time so we get all of the initials on one side and all of the finals on the other side. So velocity one initial minus velocity two initial is equal to velocity two final minus velocity one final. This is um, talking about the rate of the, the velocity of approach. Um, the initial velocity of two minus one uh, tells us that these two are coming together and we're looking at how fast they're coming together, that velocity of approach. And then um, the second part of this, the final piece, is talking about how fast they're separating afterwards. So this tells us that this is the velocity of approach versus the velocity of separation, um, and that this rep the, the rate of separation is the same as the rate of approach. So the velocity of approach equals the velocity of separation. Um, so let's say that I had two blocks um, and one was coming up at uh, 10, one was traveling at 10 meters per second and the other one was traveling at four meters per second meters per second, um, then the question would be, well, what uh, what happens in the end? Well, the fast one is going to be moving slower, and the slower one is going to be moving faster because the faster one has transferred momentum to the slower block. Okay, so what would this these two be? Okay. Um, and so if we, uh, if we look at it like this, we can say, okay, well, the velocity of approach is um, gonna be the one that's like faster minus the one that's slower, or we're gonna take 10 meters per second minus four meters per second. And that's gonna give us six meters per second as our velocity of approach, which means um, that that six meters per second is gonna equal our velocity of separation or our V2 final minus V1 final. Um, so the final velocity of two, um, let's call this one two and this one one, the final velocity of two is going to be six meters per second greater than the final velocity of one. Now, um, at this point, um, we're like, ah, well, uh, if you don't know these 
one of these velocities, um, then we still need another equation. This is where conservation of momentum would come in. If we knew the masses, then we could say our initial momentum is our final momentum. And we can use this to find um, some information about the final velocity of one of the blocks so that then we can plug it in to find um, the final velocity of the other. Now, this is a really math heavy thing. The um, big piece to take away is this idea that the velocity of approach equals the velocity of separation. If you remember anything, that's what you should remember, that the relative speeds initially is equal to the relative speeds finally.